We play and call it work. Hey there, Wargamers. Josh here from MiniWargaming.com. Today I have Mike from Firelock Games, and we're going to be running through a demo of their brand new game, Oak and Iron. Mike, do you want to tell, tell the uh, folks at home a little bit about yourself and the game we're going to be playing? Sure. So, as he said, my name is Mike, and I'm with Firelock Games. Uh, you may know us from Blood and Plunder before, so now we're venturing out doing a new game and it's Oak and Iron. And Oak and Iron is a 1 600 scale um, naval war game. It plays with three to six ships on average. You can jump that up to higher numbers and play fleet scales. Um, it's all done, it's all played from the admiral's perspective rather than a captain's. So the minutiae of sailing is kind of uh, set to the side. All the important things are there, like no sailing against the wind, sailing downwind is faster stuff like that and um, momentum and maneuvering of ships is still an important factor of the game that's 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 in there uh, but it's more about planning and setting up your fleets and and the way you coordinate all your ships together so without further ado uh, let's check out the ships themselves get the board set up and get to our game we are going to start off by taking a look at the different ships here that will be taking part in the battle um, Mike, can you give us a quick run through the different classes of ships we're going to be seeing in the game today Sure. So on the left side, we've got the pirate fleet, which I think is going to be commanded by Luca. And that's going to have a, it's, we have a sloop, a fifth rate ship of the line, and a frigate. It's kind of a fast uh, fleet with lots of firepower. On the right hand side, we've got the British merchant convoy being run by Josh. And we've got a brigantine, a galleon, and a flute. So they're all a little bit, um, some hardier ships with some better crews, uh, but not quite the firepower of the pirate fleet. So for those folks that aren't familiar, either with the different classes of ships or um, the the game itself, uh, let's take a look at the individual ships. We get a little bit better look at the detail and we can go over some of the important stats here. Okay. So since we won't be doing a full game tutorial here, uh, Mike's gonna run us through the different ships and get kind of a look at them. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the anatomy of the card and the different stats we're gonna be talking about throughout. So starting off with, I believe this is one of the frigates? Yes, this is the Petit Fragot, which I'm probably completely mispronouncing, but I like to mispronounce it in French so people can make fun of me. So this is a 14 point ship. You just see a little stamp on the top there. Um, you've always got the option to increase the skill. Typical skill on a ship is zero. You can spend points upgraded to one or two, and that's just the number of rerolls you're going to get anytime you're rolling for attacks or uh, to change your speed. Uh, right under that, you've got the, the fortitude value represented by the little hole there, and that's the amount of hits that you can block every time you're attacked. Next up, you've got the cannon, which is your broadside value. That's the number of dice you roll on an attack. And then you have the sword, which represents the crew value. Uh, that represents a couple things. Uh, that's the number of dice you roll for boarding and small arms attacks. And it's also, uh, if you double that number in fatigue, the ship becomes shaken. Uh, then right under that we got special rules, so in this case CR, which lets this ship turn twice, whereas most ships can turn once. And then we have the little diagram here with the ship with the um, kind of point of sail. So you've got the, the two twos on the left and right there. So when this ship is sailing close to the wind, it moves two. Uh, the, the little two ruler, which we'll show you when the game starts there. And then when the wind's behind it, it moves four. Then underneath, all the way at the bottom, you've got different upgrades you could add to the ship to customize it a little bit. Uh, Weatherly gives you better uh, windward ability. Sweeps lets you have oars so you can move into the wind, stuff like that. Extra guns, things of that nature. Then on the right, we just got a damage and fatigue track. So that's what we'll track the, um, the status of the ship as it takes damage. And okay, mm -hmm. and then all of these cards are included with the ships when you right. uh, end up picking up the ships? Yeah. So yeah, it's not one of these games where we're going to be flipping back and forth through a rule book constantly. You have pretty much at your fingertips there everything you need, right. uh, and you're kind of ready to go. And I think we, we talked about the frigate kind of being the one of the baseline kind of average ships. Yeah. So now that we've got a look at that, let's compare some of the other ships we're going to see. We can kind of get a sense of maybe what they're better at or worse at compared to the frigate. Next up, what do we have here? So here we have the sloop. So the sloop is a pretty light vessel, as you can see by its one fortitude, only three broadside attack and two crew. Uh, but it has uh, it sails at three speed three at all points of sail, and it's got a bunch of special rules that'll assist it, uh, like so it can take its yard just like the light frigate, so it can take multiple turns. Fore and aft rig lets it do a tighter turn when it's upwind, and small makes it harder to hit at long range. So it's um, 
it's got a pretty low point cost, so it's kind of a nice filler ship or, or scout or dispatch vessel or support ship, which those are some upgrades you could do to help you, um, especially when you're playing larger games, you could bail out some larger ships or, or okay. carry orders across the different ships. So this kind of uh, fulfills the role of this little fast flanking ship almost, you know, able kind to, to yeah. get in, get out, get some shots in. Yeah, because of its small crew, you don't want to leave it isolated because uh, the smaller crew will let it... Uh, will, will get it shaking quicker so it could be captured if it's not supported properly but it does it does fill in a bunch of useful roles for sure okay now and for those that are familiar with the video we did for blunt plunder i believe was it a sloop that we were using in you had game? a bark which okay, was, it was pretty a, close okay. gotcha yeah, pretty similar uh, different rig but as far as size you're, you're not far off so that's yeah kind of the the, the size comparison to right. give you a sense of the scale we're playing at i suppose right here we go. Now we're kind of getting down to business as far as the, you know, the firepower that Luca, the Dread Pirate Luca will be commanding. Uh, so what do we have here? All right. So here we have a fifth rate frigate. So this is a, this is actually, the model's actually technically for a fourth rate, but um, it's a little underscaled and the uh, fifth rate fits in better with this. So for the fifth rate frigate, we've got a skill. Uh, I mean, uh, so you've got the skill and all the other stuff you typically have. On, like we explained on the last card. So you see though he's got a pretty good broadside value of seven. So you're rolling seven dice on an attack which is very respectable. You got a crew value of three. Um, it's got a high free board which basically means it's a bigger heavier ship and that means you've got to do at least two points of damage to it uh, or two hit, get two hits on it in order to cause fatigue. So you can't just get the one lucky hit with your with your uh, sloops crew from long range and put fatigue down. Gotcha. So yeah, it, it's still going to be taking damage, but if you want to, you know, get through to the crew, it's going to take some pretty heavy hits. Essentially, yeah. Okay. Any other kind of key talking points here, other than I mean that firepower uh, value of seven seems a bit much. I'm a little <laughs> nervous. <laughs> now, other than that, it's pretty much straightforward. You've got a four to two to two. You've got pretty average sailing characteristics on it, so uh, that's that's pretty much it's it's pretty much just lots of cannons and sails. That works. Well, let's jump over now and take a look at the uh, British fleet. Now, something I should make note of before uh, you know there's any questions, I guess, in the uh, comment section here. When I talk about this being the the British fleet compared to the pirate fleet, uh, these I believe these ships are pretty well interchangeable between all the different nations. It's just a matter of what nation rules you're choosing to use for the ships that you have in your uh, squadron. That's right. Yep. So the cards are the the ships themselves can work with any faction. Uh, the pirates do have some limitations as they can't take ships of the line. Okay. Uh, yeah. But other than that, yeah, the ships all, anybody can sail anybody else's ship. Ships are captured back and forth all the time, so. Very cool. All right, so starting off looking at the British ships here, uh, what will this ship be that I'm commanding? So this is a fluke. So this is your middle sized ship here. It's got a fortitude of one, so it's not, it's not a very strong ship, and it's got pretty basic sailing characteristics. Um, and a, a respectable broadside rating of five, uh, but the one advantage it does have is it does have the high freeboard rule because this is a really high. The ship, all the walls on the ship are high, and it's got a big okay. um, poop deck back there and stuff. So your crew does get some extra protection. So you do have to score at least two hits on the ship in order to cause a point of fatigue on it. Got you. So it doesn't have the you know the the thicker sides that uh, you know right. maybe a big proper battleship warship would have, but right. uh, the crew is still fairly well protected. It's kind of a good all around. Yep. But this is basically just your typical merchantman merchant vessel. So not not quite well equipped for fighting, but can do it if it needs to. Second ship here in my squadron is the corvette. So the corvette is a it's a very fast ship as you can see by it's got it can do four downwind and it's got the yard rule so it's got uh, equivalent maneuverability to his to Luca's frigate uh, but it is a lighter ship so you get a smaller broadside and you only have a fortitude of one but you do get the advantage of having the small rule which makes it harder to be hit at long range but yeah, this is this is basically these would run as small uh, like privateers or pirate hunter type ships or even merchant use Getting over to my largest ship here, right. um, I think a name that most people, even if you're not super into naval combat, will probably recognize this. We have the... The Galleon. So this is uh, this being an English Galleon was probably stolen from the Spanish, or maybe the Dutch. Uh, so as you can see, it's got a pretty high fortitude of three. So you're going to be able to cancel three hits. Also has the high freeboard rule. So this is a tough ship. It's also the slowest ship here. So as you can see, windward, you only have a speed of one. So it struggles upwind, but 
it is also a pretty tough ship. It's got a very respectable broadside of five and a high crew rating because it has a ton of crew. So it is a very tough ship. So it's definitely going to make it's it's going to be your standout vessel as your flagship. And there we go. So those are the six ships we're going to be seeing in this battle. Hello there everyone, Luca from Mini War Gaming here now to play some Oak and Iron with Josh. We've already deployed, this game is typically played on a 3x3 table. In this scenario, the goal is to survive 8 turns, and I'm trying to raid the English merchants. Anyways, Josh, what, uh, what is the plan here? So we've got ourselves fully deployed. Um, we're both you know, going with the, the line ahead type formations here, but uh, I, I guess after deployment we seem to have you uh, crossing the T. So it is gonna go down to, we've each chosen our cards. We've set the direction of the wind. And Mike, unless uh, I'm incorrect, I believe we're at the stage now where we reveal our cards, which will both show us the initiative for this turn, as well as uh, give us each an ability that's printed on the card. That is correct, so you can go ahead and flip those cards. All right, so who flips first, same time? Same time. Same time, all right, so boom, initiative two. Initiative four. four. Ooh, you're going, do, I, do we resolve our cards immediately? If it says to, yeah. Okay. So in your case, you will resolve your card immediately. So what does Fleet Maneuver do? Gotcha. So with Fleet Maneuver, all ships in this squadron that are in formation may immediately make a uh, turn using the Speed 1 tool. Right, which is right there. Which is that little dude there. And then these go from 1 to 5. Right. All right, so using the little one move token here, pretty simple when you're playing Oak and Iron. Uh, we are going to line up the arrows, and this shows me how much of a turn I'm able to make. So I'm going to take the ship and just go whoop, boop. Stuff like that. You're going towards the wind, Josh. Somewhat. <laughs> Somewhat. And then same thing for the galleon. And we got the last big ship. Or sorry, it's the other small ship. I'm, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I apologize, I am not very knowledgeable with ship names, so I'll be going medium, big, small. <laughs> All right, and then I'll go into detail about what my card is. I do have the lower initiative, so I won't be going first, Josh will be, but deception is I'm a pirate, so I'm not honorable. I am flying flags that aren't pirate flags. I'm not gonna be, hey, look at me, I'm a pirate over here. I'm flying, we'll say I'm flying French flags, and you have a trade agreement with the French, so you're not gonna shoot the French. Yeah, there's, 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 <laughs> we're not quite sure here if there's gonna be anything exactly. going down, so. So the rule here is uh, ships in the squadron may not be attacked at cannon shot range, which is the long range for the remainder of this turn as the English are trying to determine what my allegiance actually is. I'm going to note one thing that these cards usually go back in your hand except for this one. I had to discard this card. I can't play it anymore after this. Correct. And now before we proceed any further, Josh and I have selected new ca uh, sorry, new cards for the next round coming up, but we don't reveal them until that next round. Right. So you have to kind of be you have to think quick, you have to think fast and th uh, pretty much imagine what your opponent's going to do. But you do have the initiative, sir. What is the plan? Uh, let's go and get ourselves sailing. So I have So I'm gonna start by moving my flute. I do have initiative So that means I move one ship then Luca moves one So with the flute and the way the wind is going right now I'm gonna be using the movement value of two and since I have it set to full sails from my deployment It means that I will be adding uh, one to that value. I could opt to take a skill check to try to uh, Change that value, but I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now So I'll be moving up the full three and you do have to go the full distance here because you didn't do the skill check. Correct. Course. That's kind of cool. It's kind of that, so, well, it's hard to slow a ship down, right? Right, you know, <laughs> it, 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 there's, there's a lot of consequences to your action. So again, I'm gonna line up the arrow to arrow, move all the way up, and I will go and turn in. Hey, what up? Now that I've completed my move with that ship, I'm gonna take one of the wake markers, put it down there, and that just lets us keep track of what ships have moved thus far. Wake marker makes sense. I was gonna call it movie water. I guess yep. you could call it movie water. Yep. <laughs> gonna go and move the sloop now. I am downwind, so I will be moving at the three, but I am swift with the upgrade so I can move up to four. I'm just gonna go with the four. And I also have tear. Tar? Tear. Tar. Tar. Yar. 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 Sorry. <laughs> My <You're> bad. <laughs> tear. Think pirates. Yar. I'm gonna move yar. Uh, that means I can turn before moving and after moving if I wanted to. Ooh. I, I don't know if I do because if I'm trying to move again, I'm just gonna get in your broadside. So actually, I will do a skill check to move a little bit slower. I think that's what I want to do. That makes sense. See, that's why I love these different games where you really gotta think about movement more than anything else. And I'm rolling five dice for the skill check. You're rolling the skill checks are always five dice. Okay. Uh, you're looking for a sail or skull result. As long as you get one of those. One of those. I'm good. Good. So we are gonna get a skull. Good. So you got. So I'm gonna go down by one one inch on this move. So yeah, you're moving down to the speed three. Are you gonna be turning before? No. So I'll go three first. So 
Where are you going, you coward? To there. <laughs> and then... Why aren't you doing it the complicated way? What's the complicated way? I just thought you were going to do it from that side. Oh. There we go. <laughs> I think I'm okay with that. <laughs> and the wake marker goes down. Woo! And it's back over to... Uh, Disturbed water. My movement. One thing to note is after you move, you're allowed to perform an action such as reloading your cannons, uh, do a rally check, repairing, changing sails, things like that. But in this case, I don't have to do any of those, so I won't. Moving over here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm still not super experienced in moving my fleet around, so I'm just going to be going in order. I've got the galleon at full sail, so I'm just going to be moving the movement value of two. Oh, he is not fast. He's not, but he's armored. That's the point. So he'll be moving up to there. Same idea. Taking a turn and then getting his awake marker. My petite frigate is going to move forward. This is a this is the, the that French was part. The worst French I've <laughs> ever heard. <laughs> Thank you. Yar! We go forward. But we're not going to yar. We're not gonna turn at all, actually. You're gonna yell the word yar, but you're yar. not gonna make use of the special rule yar. Yeah, I I keep calling it tear. I don't know why, tar. But there we go. I'm going to try to be a little bit fancier moving my Corvette here. I'm going to take a spill, uh, skill check because I want to be moving a little bit faster. So I'm looking for it. Was any sails or any skulls? That's right. Boop. And Ooh. there is the one skull. You're good. So I'm going to be going to move three. Nice. I will make use of the yar rule, which I'm going to go ahead and do a turn before I move. And then probably one again after. So using the move three, I'm going to come right over that way. I'm hoping you're like me and have no idea what you're doing in the grand scheme of things here. I, I, I'm trying to look good while not knowing what I'm doing. That's the key here. I'm definitely going to use my yar. I'm going to move forward <laughs> three, and then he's going to be that, a master move. Turning it. Look at that. Was, would, would you so call fantastic. that a master move, Mike? I would say that's some fine seamanship for sure, yes. Dang it! Oh. <laughs> and just because, you know, I'm not looking to look at these, these supposedly French ships. Are they French? Uh, Ahead of me, I'm gonna go full sails here. Full sails! So nice. that's your action that you're gonna take when you're done moving, right? Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> Lastly, my fifth rate frigate is going to, I'm gonna try to increase the movement by one. So I'm gonna go for the skill check here, which I get with a skull. Thank goodness. I was about to say, you're gonna laugh I, I thought at you me. didn't get it. I was gonna say, well, that's embarrassing. You know, the English are showing off their skills, but I guess you're able to pull some crazy stuff off too. Alrighty. So we are gonna go the full four, because I am. Down the wind, wee to there. Is that the pirate war cry? Yeah, currently I am wee. going to turn as well, just to make sure you're in arc. There we go. Cool. And you get your wake marker. Are you taking any action, sir? Ah, uh, no. Now that we have finished our movement, we're over to the attack phase. Now, because of Luca's deception, if we go ahead and do a measure here, because I can't shoot at anything beyond musket range, so I really haven't been able to determine if he's an enemy or not because of that dirty, dirty card he played. You're about to find out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be activating the flute up front, which means I take away the wake marker. Because, uh, again, this is our way to see what ships have activated, and I think that's all I can do. That's it, yep. Now, taking a look and referencing what we're talking about, this is the range ruler for the game. So we have three different ranges. We have pistol range, we have musket range, and then we have cannon range. So that will determine, when we're rolling dice to attack, what is actually effective and what is not. Now, for my activation... I will choose my fifth rate frigate, but because it is in formation with my other four, my smaller frigate, I'm allowed to activate them at the same time and broadside with both of them into your flute. Correct. Now, pretty simple when we're looking at fire arcs here, it is just the entire length of the base. We're just drawing right. straight lines. Just straight lines. The width of the base, right. Just like, so, so both of those ships look like they've got the, uh, the flute in their sights, able to fire broadside. So you're still going to, even though they're firing together, they're going to fire one at a time and resolve Naturally. each attack separately. So I'm going to pull both of these off. Who are we resolving first here, Luca? It's going to be the frigate into your flute. Now, this has five shots with its cannons, because, again, we'll measure range, and we'll know that we are only in cannon range. Correct. So only the cannons, so only the symbols of the cannons and the skulls are going to matter here. In addition, I have the additional gun upgrade, which gives me a sixth die to roll, and it is skill one, so I get to reroll one die. Sounds like a very piratey thing to do. Yes. So, we're going to be throwing six dice, getting to reroll one of them here. Cannons and skulls. And oh, that's a lot at, of muskets. Look oh. at all those muskets I'm and sabers. Nothing. All right, so don't forget, though, you do have your three fortune points. Ooh, what does that let me do? 
So you can spend one and re-roll all that. Ooh, I could, am I allowed to re-roll the re-roll I've already done? Yes. Yes, I think. For, only for the skill test, right? I will do this. And you're gonna reroll the whole thing? Yes. Oh, why do you be like this? How many, how many of these fortunes am I allowed to use a turret? Why? Uh, three per game. Okay. Three per game. Three for the whole game. You know what? I'm curious to see what I get. Oh, crud! <laughs> so you still, your skill still counts for this. So you can still reroll one. Hopefully, get a hit. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. All right. Well, that's what you get, you dastardly pirates. So now that you fired a broadside, I'll just give you a little re re reload marker from that side. And this is gone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was pretty awful. I wanted to see what the little <laughs> the little guy could do. So let's see what the fifth raid uh, frigate can do. Now seven shots normally, but we do have the additional guns upgrade because well, we're pirates. We like cannons. Yeah, you need extra guns. The same range we're looking for: cannons and skulls. Ah, there we go. Oh, okay. Job. And you've got a skill on that one too, don't you? You think you have skill two? I do have skill two, so I'm going to reroll two dice here, which will get me a third skull. Three skulls. Okay. So I'm going to put your reload marker there for firing. Cool. So now you've got three skulls. So that's basically three hits. So one of those hits will be canceled um, because of the because of your ship's fortitude. So the fortitude cancels one. However, we don't. We're not going to pull it out because Ooh. you still roll the skull. So anytime you roll the skull, these are potential critical hits. Uh oh. Uh, so we'll get to that in a minute, but for now, uh, because you took, you do have the high free ward roll, but you did take at least two hits. Yes. So you're going to take one fatigue for that. So as long as you take any, it's, you never take more than one fatigue unless a critical. Okay. Um, and then you block one damage with your fortitude and two more. So you're going to take two points of damage and one point of fatigue on your flute. I think I may have explained that a little roundabout way, but. We got you. We're following <laughs> with you. Yeah. So so for the flute, we're gonna go one, two damage, and one fatigue. Nice. Now I'm gonna reroll for these criticals, and I'm looking to reroll as many skulls out of these as I can. You want skulls, you want swords, or you want sails. That's true, because that, that represents what it hits. Okay, right. so we have got a skull. Okay, a skull, and a pistol, and a musket. So another skull result is actually a structural damage. So that's going to reduce that ship's fortitude. So now its fortitude is going to go from one to zero. Nice. That's not good. Nice. And now it is over to my turn again to go ahead and not fire your ship. That's right. Uh, we can tell something's going on. <laughs> we think that these perhaps aren't the friendly Frenchmen that we thought they were. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate the Corvette. I'm going to remove that and it's going to go back over to Luca. Onto the sloop, who is going to fire? And it's three shots normally, one for additional guns, all into your flute. Huh. Huh. We all miss. Because I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm in cannon range only. And you have no skill upgrade on the sloop, so no B-rolls. No. He's no. just an average crew. And I'm going to save my fortune. So overall, took a good chunk of damage here. Pretty simple. It's going to go back over to my turn where I'm activating my galleon, who will remove this. And then that is it for the attack phase. We move over to the end phase now where we're checking strike points, which is actually how uh, you're going to end up losing the game, is when you have more strike points than you do ships remaining. Right. And we're also checking to see if any ships get captured or anything like that. Just in the opening turn, we don't have to worry about any of it, so that's going to be the end of the end phase. Right. All right, the dastardly pirates have shown their <laughs> hand. Um, you know, you did some good damage, but... Not that much in the grand scheme of things. I wish I did more. I really do. <laughs> so we're going to move over to the initiative now, and we're going to be flipping cards to see what we have got. So on three, two, well, I guess you're going to just flip. Adjust position, initiative three, and I have Fire She Bears at initiative two. That sounds scary. With these, so Luca, real quick, read your card off. What are you capable of doing here with adjust position? When moving a ship that is in formation or within pistol shot of a friendly ship, which they all are, that ship may shift directly sideways up to speed one at the beginning or end of its move. And then for fire she bears, basically that's the way it's going to work. For the rest of the turn, ships and squadron can fire at the ships that move within their firing arc. So I can go ahead and, you know, if you, depending on the timing, if you move in, it give you a good broadside reload and then the attack phase maybe give you a second broadside. Now that we've given you a good idea of how the in-depth movement works, we are going to go ahead and simply say I'm going to activate a ship and I'll show you what it looks like at the end of its move. Right. And anything that I've done special. 
and I have no idea what I want to do. <laughs> I think the competitiveness is coming out in both Luke and I right now, because um... I don't want it to though. I don't want it to. I just want to, I want to shoot guns, please. <laughs> don't make me sad. <laughs> Doing a skill check on the sloop to try and slow down. Whoa, and that is a success. We got a sail. So that's going to move you from move what to what? So currently the sloop moves three, four because it's downwind. Uh, we're going to go down to three. So we've uh, finalized our position. We moved up. We used the just position to kind of just boop, go sideways uh, closer uh, one inch, and we're going to use our action to reload our cannons. All right, again, seeing if I'm going to get fancier, if I'm going to do this terribly, I'm going to activate my flute I hope you first, do it terribly. I believe. I hope this is awful. Thanks, Luke. I really appreciate that, big guy. That's really, uh, that means a lot. Uh, so he's going to go ahead, and he's at movement three right now. Moving up, being aggressive here, uh, you know, we don't really tolerate pirates. My poor sloop. <laughs> <laughs> my sloop! Now, Mike, what are my options for my actions now? I've, I've had my poor flute get shot up. Is there a way for me to try to recover some my of the damage that's been done? Yep. So what you could do is you could either repair some damage points on your ship, um, which could be probably a good idea since your fortitude is now zero. Because if your fortitude yes. is ever zero and all your damage bubbles are knocked out, then you are basically disabled and you lose that ship. Okay. Uh, which also gain you two strike points, which you don't want to have. So no. um, you can also take a, a, a rally action, which take off one fatigue. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to, for some reason, change your sail setting, you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. You know what? At this point, I'm thinking probably the best thing is... Ah, oh, geez, maybe I should be trying to rally, because I think Luke is going to be shooting me up a bunch, so what do I need to do to do a rally action here? You just take away one fatigue point. Nice. Well, that I can do. So you're down a happy, happy crew. They're feeling okay about it. Nice. <laughs> On to my petite frigate. I'm just going to start calling a small frigate. I'm just going to start calling that English. Uh, we're going to do a skill check to slow her roll. Oh, yeah, we got her with a sail. Always getting with one. And this small frigate has moved up. It turned, and it didn't go the full distance of the one for just position, just about half, just to keep them in formation. And as an action, naturally we'll reload that side. One thing I want to know, because I think it's super cool, obviously you're shooting one side of the ship, the other one's still open to shoot, so you can actually fire both, you can just fire both sides and you can reload either side. I like that a lot. Yep. Gonna go ahead and activate the Corvette next. I'm gonna go for the skill check because I want him a little bit faster. Um, so show me at least one sailor, one skull. You're good. There we go. Wow, that's a freaking hot roll. Phenomenal roll. Using the YAR rules, able to kind of drag him into a position that hopefully I'm going to zip off after you pretty quick. Gotcha. No action after. No action afterwards. I'm happy with where he is and what he's doing. That means I got to move my fifth rate. Skill check to slow down my fifth rate. We are... No, we're going the full distance. That is anything bad happen if I fail skill check? No, but you do have your skill, uh, so you can reroll two dice. Oh, right, that does make sense. Mm -hmm. And, oh, we're good, we're good. Oh, double good. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go uh, reduce our speed by one. So moving forward to uh, using the adjust position to go closer that way, and we will reload. The galleon's gonna go for a skill check. I wanna speed him up a little bit. You're it good. Works, so I'm gonna go. And no action after move? No action after move, gonna keep going fast. All right. Uh, I feel like I'm in a pretty good position here. I feel like you are. <laughs> I feel like the flute's not in a good position right now. <laughs> not poor ship. No, it doesn't look good. That's your little ship though, right? It That's looks... my medium. Oh, it's your medium? What's your... Oh, the Corvette's the teeny one. Corvette's the little fella, Okay. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. That is it for movement. We're on to the attack phase. Uh, I have initiative still, I believe, correct? Yep, you do. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot the small frigate first, and because they are information, information. Thank you. We're gonna fire the sloop at the same time into that uh, flute. Sloop. sloop into flute. Starting with the frigate again, five shots plus one for having additional guns, and uh, already checked range. Still in cannon range, not in musket range. So we're still looking for cannons and skulls. We got a cannon, but you have. Oh, you didn't heal the the. the I was not able to. No. And I do have skill one, so I might as well reroll one of these to get a skull. Sure, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which is at least two hits to get a fatigue. Right, so I do get a fatigue out of that because of your raised. Um, sorry, what is it called? The high freeboard. The yeah. freeboard, which is the higher part on the ship. There's two hits, right? I didn't know it's called freeboard though. Now I know. Now Josh is taking this damage. I get to reroll this for a critical effect. That doesn't do anything, right? No. No effect on a cannon. 
It's time for the hero sloop. You know, Josh, I'll give you a deal. If you give me all your booty right now, I'll stop shooting at you. Just, no, just no. throw it overboard. No. Throw it overboard. Please <laughs> throw it overboard. <laughs> throw it overboard. Like, we're in the ocean. What are you going to do? No, the crates, they float naturally. <laughs> the crates of gold will float, yeah. yeah. Well, there's gold in there? <laughs> well, what else would you be fighting for? I thought they were just crates. <laughs> I just wanted Those crates. Those sweet crates. I thought it was grains. I wanted <laughs> grains. I wanted grains. I wanted Dude, rum. Storage is winning. Rum. There's probably lots of rum. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. Shooting. We got a cannon. One damage, but no fatigue. Yeah, one damage, no fatigue. Still not bad. Not bad. Uh, definitely, I'm gonna go ahead and activate that flute and get some shots in before that fifth rate uh, does his thing. Not into my sloop. Yeah. Definitely into the sloop. Oh yeah, well I'll have you know I'm small and I actually have two fortitude at this range. That's not bad. That's actually That's kinda cool. Good. I'm a teeny ship, good luck hitting me. Uh, so show me cannons. And Boop. skulls. Oh. Well that's a whole lot of not cannons. I do... Kind of skill one. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and spend one of my fortune. I understand, I did that and, too. And uh, re-roll the whole thing. Good luck, good luck. Thank you, I appreciate you wishing me good luck. But I feel like I'm in a good position so I don't need to be rude anymore. We have a critical. <laughs> so we have one there, and I do have skill one across the board because I'm English. Ooh. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just re-roll. I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot. Let's re-roll that. the wrong die. Told no, you. No. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the sloop did take a hit, so you take a point of fatigue on that ship. Oh, yeah, because I don't have the, the free board. Right. Yep. So you take one point of fatigue, and you're gonna get to re-roll that to see if you get a crit. Please. Show me another skull. Please don't. No, no, that is a second point of fatigue. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, that's a crew hit. Ooh, so I lose one die or two dice on all. Oh, Correct. So you're next. Nice. Yeah, you're gonna lose two dice. For every two fatigue, you lose two dice on skill tests and attacks. Gotcha. All right, that leaves just my fifth rate, fifth rate frigate to fire. I'm gonna try and get rid of this flute. It is a medium ship, so I'll feel pretty cool if I can do some heavy damage to it. I am throwing eight dice because of additional guns. <sighs> And the most important thing to note is I'm now in musket range. So, oh geez. Okay. So muskets are successful hits as well. Yep. So we got musket, musket. That's a, those are pistols. Oh, sorry, pistols. Yeah. I got musket. Yeah, no, the, the, those are prototype dice. They're definitely going to be clearer on the finals. So we have <laughs> come out like we wanted. It. Musket and skull. It's not too bad, but I have skill too, so I might as well reroll two of these, which will get me oh a double sail. <laughs> so does the musket do damage to the ship itself? Yeah, because that's just representative. You're not, hit. You're not okay. necessarily shooting muskets at his ship, although that is part of the attack. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a fortune to reroll everything. Because I have to get rid of them. I want, my goal here is to try and get rid of them. I'll take it from you over here. And there we go. we got musket, 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 cannon, skull. That's five hits. Yeah, that, that might do it. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? Here, my skill. There we go. Another musket. <laughs> Why would you be like that? So at this point, I've only got two more damage boxes to check off. Right. So I'm gonna go one, two. Right. So once you're out of damage boxes, you enter crippled state. Okay. Okay. So you take a little crippled token on your ship. Um, now, however, because your fortitude was, is already zero. Yes. Easy sunk. Uh, if your fortitude is zero and you're crippled, your ship is disabled. Oh. So we're gonna put a second marker there just to note that. So now that ship is out of the game. Um, Does he still kind of remain there for line of sight purposes he, and everything he, like that? He will stay there um, for until we're going to check at the, during the end phase and see if he sinks. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. What about does the does the take this off? It's not important anymore. Not does the crew's morale fatigue matter anymore at this point? No, nothing matters. That ship is he's an obstacle destroyed. now. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Nice, he's good a, job, he's buddy. He's a piece of terrain now. And that is two strike points against Josh. That's not looking good so far. Okay, that was kind of cool. Good job, pirates. Yes, and by the way, I'm not French. I'm pirates. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? It's, it's odd. It is odd. So now you you get to shoot with your other ships, but I don't think they have arc. Maybe, no, maybe I don't they... have arc anybody there. It kind of, oh, yeah, it looks like it on your angle, but no. Okay, so maybe. essentially what we can just skip both of those shots and we can go to the end phase where we put our old card back in our hand, uh, if, if we're allowed to, but both of us can, and we check to see if that sinks. So the way this works, we roll the D8 here, and on a skull, she's gone. Otherwise, no, just kind of floats there. Uh, the crew's abandoned ship, it's on fire. It's not on fire though, right? That's not a mechanic. It might be on fire, I don't know. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was another mechanic. <laughs> Josh and I have our cards that we picked. Take courage. Turn three. And fleet maneuver. maneuver. Is that the kind of the same thing as I did? All ships? No, this is the one I get to make the turn. Mm -hmm. Ooh, right. Okay, so you, you definitely do yours first. So what you're allowed to do now is move your ships if they're in formation or within pistol range of each other. Yep. And they are. We're, we're nice and close to the flagship here. Nice. I'm trying to think that, yeah, do I want him to go super wide? No, I can't have him turn it into the wind. I was really hoping my uh, ship would sink. 
it still like might have this end phase. You could just maybe plan for a sinking in this end phase. <laughs> I think we're just gonna have the Corvette go ahead, take a little bit of a turn there. You've chosen a new, I guess, yeah, you can't get the maneuver around this guy. <sighs> yep. This guy gets to do a turn as well, right? I do, but with the turn one here, I don't think I'm gonna be facing the way I want because I don't want to just. Oh, sail that sounds. That looks awful. There, there's a part of me that wonders what happens when I sail into another ship, but there's a big, there's a much bigger part of me that doesn't want to find out what happens when I do so. What if you're able? Because you can turn before you move. You want to take that risk. You want to see what you'll <laughs> turn now and then turn in your move. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. Happy how he is. Yes. Happy as I'm going to be. Uh, then do I do mine now as well? Ships in the squadron that are in formation within pistol shot of. The flagship immediately remove a point of fatigue. Now these ones are in formation. This is the only one with fatigue, so I'll remove one point of fatigue from him. Is it all fatigue? One point of fatigue. Mm. Josh and I picked our two new cards, and we are ready to start maneuvering. Starting with Josh, as he thinks. He yes, he is as, I, as I go tank. into the think tank. <laughs> Galleon will go. I'm going to take a skill check. I want to slow down a bit here. Oh, you're slowing I'm not down. Not necessarily very happy with this. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can't slow him down a little bit. Looking for one sail or skull. You can re-roll. Oh, you got skull, never mind. You're good. Moving up. Whee! Are you gonna do a turn? The one. Uh, no, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now. And that's your move. Any action? And as an action, I think I'm gonna go back to just um, the battle, battle, battle sails. Battle sails. Up next, we've got the sloop who is going to just move, he's just gonna go move four because I got the um, downwind and I'm swift, so I'll go with that four. Ending there, I am an Ark of the Galleon now, though I didn't didn't plan for that. It is, it's, I thought I was good, but I am just hitting the corner there. Anyways, I'm gonna spend my action on getting rid of all of my fatigue because I don't think this sloop is gonna have too many shots. It's It's got, actually it has no shots. So I'm just gonna get rid of the fatigue and we'll keep the, uh, the reload up. Over here, uh, little Corvette is definitely in a good spot as far as speed. He's all the way up to movement five right now, uh, with being uh, the fact that he's sailing large. So I'm going to use the Yar to turn, turn him. We're going fast. Fast. Yeah, Yar. And then you're going to Yar again. Yep. Just drag myself over that way. I'll take him down to battle sails as well. All right, let's get this petite frigate up. I'm gonna do a skill attack to try and slow down the frigate. It's going a little too fast for me. Well, we're good. Ending there and using an action to reload that side of cannons. Because Josh has no other ships to activate, I'm gonna go ahead and move my fifth rate frigate. Ending there, not turning at all and uh, reloading. So that's it for movement. We're on to the attack phase where you have priority. Yes, indeed. Your galleon. Galleon's gonna open up over on your little sloop there. Sloop! So, Six I'm legs. in cannon range. Nice. So we have... Not a whole lot of cannons, but I do have a special rule with the English. When making a broadside attack at musket or cannon range, I reroll all the saber results. That's what only so musket. Oh. That's only two of them. Plus your skill. Plus, your Plus skill. the okay. skill, so I can get a grand total of four rerolls. Take these four rerolls. That's like a full reroll. Okay. It didn't get a whole lot better. <laughs> oh, I thought that these were going to be a skill. Okay, that's all, all together, all your rerolls. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and spend a fortune. And reroll all six? Yeah, I, I I don't know why I'm fixated on the sloop? your little ship. The sloop! I need to get some damage in to feel better about this. So we got a full six reroll. Gee, okay, we got two hits. Two hits thus far, and I got to get my four rerolls. Uh, no, just two for your skill, because the other ones were for the swords, but you didn't get any crew results. Which is the gotcha, it's just the swords. Perfect. Okay, yes. skill two. two. And it's going to be a total of two, two hits. Two. But at this range, I am fortified two. Wait. But the critical might still be a critical. Yeah, and you still take a point of fatigue for getting hit. This is true. So let's see what the critical so is. The critical. Sales. Ooh, what so does that mean? you drop a sail setting. Oh, okay. So you... I got little sails up, and I do take a point of fatigue. And onto my ship, we'll say that he shoots, but he's got no targets in sight. Uh, I actually might have him, but there's this ship in the way, so I can't actually fire. Right. But we'll roll for the flute. Let's see if the flute sinks. <gasps> no. no. And uh, going to the end phase, because I have no shots anymore because of the reload marker and out of range on your... Uh, sorry, what is Corvette. That? Corvette, that's right. We got our new cards. We're ready to go. Bam! Adjust positions again. Fire as she bears. Fire as she bears. Gotcha. So will this one be able to fire as it's already got a reload marker? Nope. Okay. But that one will be able to. 
and I am at an initiative three, so I will be moving first. <coughs> and I have adjust positions, which is, allows me to do that little one inch maneuver, or so that one movement maneuver. I'm gonna go ahead and move my sloop first, because it's, well, the first kind of, first ship in my procession here, so if I don't, bad things are probably gonna happen. Uh, because my sails are set to little, I'm gonna be minus one on my move, but I am swift and the wind is still windward, so moving three. And I'm gonna do a skill check to move fast. Oh, we fail. And there's no skill in this guy, so he does not move fast. You get fortune point with your last fortune point. No, 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 I'm okay. <laughs> Final position of the sloop. Chose to rally my crew and not reload because, I, again, I don't feel like shooting to the galleon. It's just, waste. <laughs> it's, it's oh, what he's got, like three, four durable? Yeah. Four yeah, seven. and I only have four shots, so. Wait, do I have four shots? Yeah. yeah I do have four shots. Galleon's just gonna you move speed one. And move his one. We. No turns? <sighs> Let's look at some angles here. And turning that little bit and reloading? The action will be a reload, correct. All right, so you still fire as she bears up. So if I yes. do, it, the second I move this guy, it's gonna, gonna be some shots, which is not great. Maybe. Friggin' is moving next, gonna try and slow it down with the skill check. Oh, we do, good. So we are gonna go down to three. Move the frigate and adjusted positions. And fire she bears. Fire she bears, so you're gonna fire now instead of in the shoot phase. Six shots into the frigate. Yes, sir. Cannons and crits. Oh, that's not good. Okay, pretty good. Let's go two. So and I'm gonna get two rerolls out of that. You get to reroll because the musket, uh, the range of something being English? Uh, no, it's the, the skill rating of two on the ship. Okay. And you could reroll that sword. Okay, kind of so it kind of flows into each other? Yep. Oh, the sword, that's what you want to reroll. That's right. But no, so. So still three hits though. And I yeah. am, uh, oh, I- Fortitude two. Fortitude two. So you're gonna take a point of damage, a point of fatigue, and you get to re-roll your two skulls. Yep, let's see what the skulls have turned into. Ooh, sail hit, so sail. slow them down. Slow her down, and I'm taking a fatigue and a damage. And this one is gonna fire as well. So right. five dice. Little Corvette throwing five dice in. Ooh, wow. Pretty uh, darn good, and uh, skill one, because I'm the English. So I get to re-roll one die. Yep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I guess that's what she needed. All right, yeah, so that's going to be your fortitude's going to block two damage. So yep. you're going to take two. Still taking two damage. And you're also going to take another point of fatigue. Yep, the ship's not. And he gets hurt. three skull rerolls. Let's see what he gets. Oh, nothing. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and spend my last fortune. Woo! I don't think I'm going to get a better chance than this. To, uh, you really do some heavy damage. So sails again. So I'm so anchored? You're down to anchor. Yeah, the ship's immobilized, basically. Cool. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> My activation there is I've got my little Corvette uh, is going to go ahead and move his four to there, and then he is going to turn it a bit on you. Finish the move, and going to reload, of my course. action, take a reload, yeah. Got to move my fifth rate. Just going to go three forward. No skill checks needed here. Ending there with the wake marker. That should be it for movement. Onto the attack phase. Ooh. So I am gonna go ahead and fire my frigate because I have initiative and all the shots will go to the galleon. Hopefully I get lucky. Uh, he's not looking so good. I got two points of fatigue. So instead of having six shots, I only have four. You ready? I mean, cannon range only, so we have three hits. Oh no! And skill one, oh, four, four hits. Four hits, wow. So cool. he did get a point of damage on you. And fatigue. And fatigue, yep. Gotcha. And with that damage and fatigue, I'm gonna see if I get any more effects with the criticals. Sails. And crew. So that's well, that's crew, another point of fatigue. Yeah, oh, that's nice. an extra point of fatigue and a sail drop. Yeah, I'll, count, I'll count you lucky, buddy, before I uh, end my reload marker. Which, at your point of sail, means you're moving zero. That's, that's a, a test. pretty <laughs> slow, slow ship. Let's go Corvette, five dice into your frigate. Leave me be. No, no, sir. Uh, I believe we're still at cannon range there. Right, I'll pull this. And we've got uh, two hits. And you get to get a skill reroll. Skill reroll. That's right. Take two here. Just one. Only one. Oh, they both I hit. Cheated, so, so. Okay. so you could you could roll all of that. I guess the one matters though. We'll, we'll we'll randomize it. So on a four up, it's gonna be the skull. Yeah, you, there go. you got it. So that's three hits and a critical. Wait, one of those is a critical. So I'll negate two of those. So I'm gonna take a fatigue and a damage. And rerolling to test for the crit. That's. Hold that's on, nothing, nothing, right? That's nothing, yeah. That leaves my fifth rate frigate to go ahead, who's just gonna fire at the 
Galleon? Galleon, thank you. So can he? Barely in line of sight, barely in range. It's gonna be eight shots because of additional guns, cannons, and skulls. We got a cannon, we got a skull, and I'm skill two, so as we'll roll two of them. We'll get nothing out of that. So I either choose to keep this or use my last fortune, eh? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, whatever. Last fortune, Josh has got none left. I want no fortune as well. Ooh, we only got a skull out of that one. But two skill. It's gonna give me. Ah, same result in the end. <laughs> so you ignore both of them, so except no for the critical. Damage, but he will take a fatigue because you got two hits. Nice. And the critical is gonna result to be sales, so you're anchored. Ooh. Mm. So he, you could, you can't fire, but you can just activate him. Correct. He's got reload. I'm gonna go ahead and activate him as well. And that is the end of the action phase. Attack phase, and which brings us to the end phase. See if that sinks. On a skull. No, no, sticking around. And we put our old cards back in our hands. And that is it. That is the end of four. It's the end, uh, yeah, the end of four. Round five. All right, Josh, is turn five. Let's flip over some cards. Bam, take courage again. And I'm going to go fleet maneuver. Right. Might as well. Uh, you are definitely going super fast with that initiative four. All ships in this, I can't remember, You can that are in formation may immediately make turns using the speed one. I'm just kind of going for the initiative at this point, though. That's fair. And I want to take courage again, so anything that is in formation or within pistol range of my flagship uh, regains one uh, fatigue. My first activation here, kind of in a rough spot with the Galleon. Not super happy about this, so I think uh, he's not going anywhere. Okay. And I'm just going to simply raise anchor as my action. So you'll be at your lower speed? Yes. I'll go ahead and move my sloop. I'm going to try and surround this Galleon, I think. I want to go fast, and I'm only going three currently, so I'm going to try and go... Yep, I'd go with the seal, sail or the skull, so we're going to go four. My action after moving will be reloading, naturally. Okay, let's get aggressive with the Corvette. I'm going to try to slow down a bit to go down to move three. You I do. Oh, you are good. Mm -hmm. And then I will be uh, reloading. So it's final position, again, staring down the poor frigate. So I'm going to go with my frigate where I'm going to essentially not move. I was thinking about reloading and just taking shots, but the issue is, what's going to happen with this ship? I'm just going to end up blocking my own line of sight, and if I don't, he's he's just going to be useless. So taking a shot now might amount to nothing. So I'm going to put it to lower sails. So what was it called? Minimal. The minimal sails. There we go. As his action. Fifth rate frigate is going to attempt to slow its roll. Uh oh. Skill rerolling. Nothing. So I have to actually go the uh, three. So we've moved, and we do have an angle on the galleon, be it very, very tight, <laughs> and we'll reload as my action. That's the end of the movement, onto the attack phase. You get priority, you get the one ship. I'm trying to think, let's see if I can make my plan work. What is, what is the plan? I don't know. <laughs> what? Does no, he? You don't really gain anything by that, you might as well. So you're choosing. trying to gauge something. Choosing him? Yep. I'm gonna go with my fifth rate frigate uh, firing into the galleon. Fifth rate frigate's got the eight shots. We're looking for cannons and crits. Uh, oh, we got a cannon and a crit. And we have skill, which will give us nothing. So we just have uh, two hits, which is enough for a fatigue, if I'm correct, right? On the galleon? Yeah. Yes. And let's see what the critical effect is. Musket? Nothing. Nothing. I'm gonna activate here, and I'm done. Well, you can small arms the sloop. Oh, okay, because that won't give me a reload? Correct. Gotcha. Let's do that. Okay. So you got two dice. I am in musket range for the small arms, so that would be the actual muskets, swivel guns, things like right. that. You're just trying to pick off my crew and hit me with fatigue and all that good stuff. Correct. Now, as opposed to using the big guns, I got a crew value of two, so that's what I'm rolling on here. Alrighty. And you have skill one still, so we're looking for those, those symbols, cannons, crits, and muskets. That's a musket. Yeah. And skill one? Yep. That's a, that's a muscle. Yeah. Either way, you're just going to do a point of fatigue. Right. So, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot my sloop. I'm going to big guns, cannons. I don't think I'm in musket range. I think I'm just in cannon range. You're Definitely cannon range. I got lucky last time. Uh, the whole goal here is to, I want to get that galleon. I want to make it mine. I want to sell it on the open market. If there is an open market for galleons, there might be. I don't know. I think there's a pretty strong galleon market <laughs> entering this setting. Uh, so we're looking for cannons. Oh, crow, we got a cannon. That's great. Uh, I have no skill. Oh, so that's it. That's it. You just nothing. No Obviously fatigue. Right no nothing. Yeah. No fatigue. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's got high freeboard, so you need to do at least two hits to cause a point of fatigue. So. Right. It makes sense. It is a big ship. You do. And I do get reload marker. I mean, See, I earned it. You don't get nothing. I earned it. 
Thus ends this turn. We're on to the sixth turn. I have two more turns to accomplish my goal here. Otherwise, uh, you either get away or be it reinforcements show up and I run out of ammo or I'm just too afraid to fight anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Please go away, Flute. I don't want you here anymore. Let's go. No. no. <sighs> Interesting. It's initiative time. Okay, a little stressed. Ah! Fire issue bears. Musketeers! Oh jeez, what does that do? Uh, I go initiative four. Ships in the squadron may make two attacks during the attack phase, but at least one of those has to be a small arms attack. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm mostly going for the initiative, but this sloop will get a small arms attack. Yep. All right, sloop boy, you got to go a little bit faster. You're currently going three. You're with the you're with the wind, but the stupid sails are down. Oh, we failed. Dang, that's my next one. If only I had a fortune point. If only I had a fortune point. <laughs> So we're gonna end there. I did rotate a little bit. I'm gonna keep the reload marker up because I am planning on boarding and I can still fire small arms and board with that on. So I will instead get rid of one of my fatigue. So my sloop is nice, nice and healthy right there and that, that is uh, my action and more well, move and action. Okay, so I'm gonna try to speed the ship up. Now I'm at movement zero right now because <laughs> I'm at minimal sails and uh, the way the wind's going here. So. To take the test, instead of the five <laughs> dice I normally get, staggerly. <laughs> I lose two dice for every two fatigue. I have four fatigue, so I'm down to a single die. Okay. Uh, yes. Which I need a skull or a sail. But you ready? I'm just going to roll it right now. 25%. No. Mm. You have skill. I do have the skill. Mm. No. That's a shame. So he's not moving. So he's, he's there. What, what's your action going to be? Do you, are you, do you have to think? Oh. Do you have to think? Do you have to think? I'll listen. It might be to cry. <laughs> I'm going to play Risky and Reload. Oh, reload? Don't forget, you're also shooting four less dice when you shoot. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> That's the two dice broadside right now. Oh. Is it only two dice? Yep. It's going to go down to two dice. Yeah, but on the bright side, you have skill too. So you get to reroll both of those dice. <laughs> Thanks, bud. All right, so neither of us Yeah, never mind. Day. It's time for a pep talk instead of a reload. Yeah, maybe you wake some of those guys that are cowering under the stairs or... Yeah, you're not actually dead. You're not dead. You there's, have to fight there's a guy under a pile of ropes. <laughs> <laughs> you go find that guy. This is my go with the frigate. I am windward, which means I'm moving three because my sails are a little down. I'm going to go ahead and try and slow my frigate down. I do. So we're gonna go two. Final position there. You finished your movement. Yes. Why? Wait. I might change. Fire something. issue bears. Oh, I forgot about fire issue bears. I don't think there was a way you're gonna get out. Yeah. There's no way. I forgot. But I will reload though. Yeah. That's scary. Terrifying. Terrifying. Is there any? There's no fatigue on this bad boy, right? Nope. nope. Fire. Still pretty fresh. Uh, five dice because of the additional guns. Correct. Oh, you have additional guns. I. That's only. Uh, Ten range. We have hit. So I got one crit. So I will ignore that with my fortified, but what's going on? Um, now I re-roll yep, the re -roll sword. Re -roll sword. Ooh, that's true. <gasps> no. no. And you have a skill one. Skill once again, okay, re-roll. Yep. No. Okay. So just one hit, that is a point of fatigue for you, and he could re-roll the skull, see if he gets a... Uh, is this fair? Re-roll, see if you get anything crit. bigger. Cannon? No. That's nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. So I am at fatigue three or four, though. Any there. Uh, that is it. Uh, you've done your shooting. Uh, you get to go with that one, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> now, Mike, at this point, no matter what I do, I don't think there's any way to avoid the, the collision. Probably not, no. So how do we resolve this? Yeah, what happens here? So you're basically going to do your turn until you contact him. Okay. Or could, could you just go move. straight if you wanted to? <laughs> or go straight, yeah, whatever you want to do. How, how do you want to do this, Josh? How fancy do you want to be with this collide? I'm going to be pretty fancy. All right. So we're going to see if he can escape, though. Can he do it? Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm impressed. This is pretty... This is Things a, are pretty toit. This is toit. And I'm going to do my best to not bump anything as I go. No, I understand. Even if you do. Uh, uh, <laughs> I bumped you. See, I said it and then I uh, ruined it. I th Yeah, my... It's... No, I got you still. Well, he's going he's to still I... turn again. He is Yar. Oh, this is true. Yar! Yar! But I'm going to have to just kind of Yar into getting ready to shoot each other. That's actually thing. a really impressive maneuver, too. Thank you. You do get outside of boarding range. I just I thought it was so clean cut. There's uh, there's no way you could get get out, but uh, you did. There you go. So that's the point blank. That's the PB there. That's what that's for. So oh, okay. No uh, no, boarding. no boarding. And then I'll do that reload as my action. Of course. Uh, <laughs> that is that's a raking shot for sure. That's yeah, raking shots are a thing of the game. We'll show you that in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> On to my fifth rate frigate. Trying to slow down. We do. So we're gonna go two. No turning. So we're gonna reload as my action. So we might as well go with my sloop first, because we know the galleon's not firing. At least as far as I know, it's not. Uh, the sloop, all I can do is uh, small arms fire into your corvette. 
But because I played Musketeers, I'm going to do it twice, so I can choose the same attack action. So I only have two dice. Additional guns doesn't help with that, does it? Do I have three dice? No, okay. it's not. All right, so we are looking, we're in pistol range for sure, so we're looking for pistols, muskets, cannons, and criticals. So we have pistol and cannon, so we have two hits. So that's a point of fatigue? Nice. And do you, how much damage do you potentially? Oh, it just you does fatigue. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's just fatigue. I'm so just in the fatigue. Now you can do it again. Try it again. Gotcha. We have a critical, does that matter? No. no okay, no. two fatigue on you though. All right, um, so let's explain how raking goes, since you're firing your Corvette now, correct? Yes. So I'm going to get three shots, because you managed to get some fatigue on me. Right. And Mike, uh, just to clarify for us here, so the cannons are counting as crits as well because of the raking shot? Correct. And as, as long as you get at least one hit, you'll give them an extra point of fatigue on that attack as well. Right, because it's kind of tearing right through my crew. Right. It's going That's right the down the center of my ship. ship hitting yeah. everything along the way. All right, uh, let's see what we got. So you do miss with one, but you have a reroll. Right, you have still yes. one, right? That's so three hits. Three hits, yeah. That's your fortitude of one will stop one damage, so you take two damage and two fatigue. That's pretty good. Fifth rate frigate. Uh, yeah, you're just gonna fire into the galleon. Might as well, because uh, that's the only thing I have <laughs> line of sight on. Still throwing a ton of dice, looking for cannons and crits. So we got a crit. And oh, we got three hits, and I am skill two. Yes. So we are gonna get nothing. Right, so, four to two, three on the galleon blocks all those, but you still get to reroll your skull, and that is a point of fatigue on him that he just took off. That is a pistol, so that's no effect. I'm not gonna do anything when it shoots, and I have no arc on mine. All right, let's see if this ship sinks. If we put our cards in our hands, and oh, oh it does! Yes. And it okay. goes. Interesting. To the bottom of the sea. Interesting. Would that would, would that ship ship have been too destroyed for me to reclaim? Yes. Yeah. All right. So it was the lost cause anyway. So we don't care. <laughs> On to turn seven, we're about to flip our cards. Uh, three, four. Oh, you got zeal. Interesting. Is that an English specific one? Yep. Because I always use raise the black too, so that's also pirate oh, okay. specific. Well, we'll do yours first. What does zeal do? So ships in the squadron that are information or within pistol shot of the flagship immediately remove a point of fatigue. Oh, okay. So the flagship will automatically remove one point of fatigue, which is important because you're back down to three. Mm -hmm. So raise the black. This one is done afterwards. I think your zeal one is as well. All opposing ships within musket shot of a ship in this squadron immediately roll two dice. Any ship that fails to roll at least one skull takes a point of fatigue. So it's pretty much just him. Okay. So I. It's supposed to be a skull or a sail. It's a skull or a sail. Yeah. There, there's updated cards. Nope. Mm. So you take a point of fatigue. Can you roll that with skill? Or. Nope. Not, not skill check? Okay. Okay, so first activation, we're gonna go right here. Um, movement, uh, nothing, but I can try the skill check. And how much got, fatigue have I got on me? You've got three, so you're only losing two dice. So you can roll three dice to check. Nice. And you got two rules. You're good with this Okay. Skull. So you're gonna go one faster? I am. I'm gonna take the reload as an action. Finishing your move there, staring down all this action over here. Yes, sir. So it's my go, A. Eh? So my sloop is going to try to slow it down. We're on three dice. And we do. So we're going to go down to two, just because I don't want to get stuck in. So I have turned as much as I can, and we've come in contact. What happens now, Mike? So now um, you're going to check, you're going to roll uh, dice equal to your speed. Which was two. Right. And if you get any sails, you get stuck. If you get a skull, you'll give yourself a point of damage. So, so nothing. So instead what happens is you're going to move point blank away. This ship's going to move point blank away, directly away from you. So, so I'm, I'm, No, you stay where you are. Oh, he? Oh, I push him away. Yeah, you collided I'm him and pushed him. Yep, there you go. Boop. So there you go. So I bounce you off. Interesting. And that's it. And I can't move anymore, correct? That's it. That's where you move ends. Well, it is what it is. I am going to remove a point of fatigue instead of reload. Well, let's see what I can do. We're going to... Whoop. Whoop. Go forward four. Whoop. E, what up? Are you going to turn again? Or are you happy? Are you going to yar? Yeah. We are going to, in fact, yar. <laughs> what up? Are you going to get rid of your reload marker or fatigue? I haven't figured it out yet. And Josh is getting rid of fatigue, which I think is smart. Because you you're not trying to kill me, you're trying to stay alive. True. Okay, Mr. Frigate, you are mo moving four current, three currently, because the uh, sails are down. Uh, we're going to go and try and speed her up, but I have enough fatigue to make it, so I'm only rolling three dice. <laughs> We are speeding it up, so we're going to go back up to four. And I forgot to mention that my uh, frigate will rally, so I'll go down to two fatigue instead of three. And lastly, because Josh has nothing else to move, I'll go with my fifth rate frigate. And that's the uh, final position for my fifth rate. I am in line of sight to shoot at the 
Galleon, thank you. I want to call it Corvette. So I'm actually I'm in a pretty safe position here. Yeah, you're pretty pretty well set. And we're moving on to the attack phase. Yes. And Josh has the initiative in the attack phase. What is the plan? Is it? We're gonna start off. We're gonna small arms. Into my scoop. Um, scoop. I do have some fatigue issues going on, but uh, it's always a minimum of one die. Right. Yeah. So you normally throw two here, but you have at least two fatigue, and the so rule is always min one die. Let's see what I can't get. That's a hit. So that's pretty much a fatigue, right? Oh, that's huge. Yep. So he's done. I'm kind of curious. So he's not firing anything, right? But I'm curious to see what happens to the uh, galleon. So I'm going to fire. Did, did the galleon reload? No. No, no. Uh, oh. did, I I? did I? Reload. I think you did. Yeah, you I think did. I did, but I just didn't end up in a good spot. Yeah, you did end up reloading the galleon. You ended up turning that frigate real sharp so the guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So I will fire my fifth rate into the galleon. Eight shots at cannon range. Uh, we got three, four hits. Uh, two critic, three criticals. Unless I knocked it out. Was it three criticals? No, it was three. Okay. Yeah, three. Rerolls. Nothing. Still three criticals. Only one goes. So it's so one. That is a damage and a fatigue. Damage and a fatigue and three critical effects, which I'm going to roll all over the place. Which is another critical. What does that mean? Well, <gasps> fortitude by one. So and now he's fortitude two. And these do nothing, correct? Correct. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Scream. So he's going to go ahead. Yep. Gotcha. And we are, I'll go on to mine. I'm not in boarding range here, but I am in small arms range, which I will at least fire at you, because why not? Uh, my sloop is <laughs> has enough fatigue that's only throwing one die. Huh! No, get your swords don't reach that far. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fire and I am in musket range. So I will be firing and hitting on also muskets. Because of the fatigue, I am down to four shots though. Uh, because of my additional weapons. I'm just looking for something cool here. Two hits, right? Two muskets. You do have a skill one there. No, just the just two hits. hits. So that is a fatigue and a damage. Nice. Does that put you at max fatigue or three? Well, he, he rallied. Away, yeah. That's right. So that is it. We're on to turn eight. I have to make some magic happen here. I have musketeers at initiative four. Well, I got take courage in initiative two. All right. So musketeer is only relevant in the attack phase. What's take courage do? Uh, ships and squadron that are in formation or within pistol shot, the flagship immediately remove a point of fatigue. So he just heals a point of yep. fatigue? Gotcha. So he back to three. And we're gonna end up there. I don't. I'm trying to predict the movement of the Corvette. It is a Yar ship, as Mike said. It's not gonna be easy to predict. I might be messing up here, but it is what it is. And we're gonna reload. Way up to a whopping two. Yeah, Gallon's gonna try and speed up to a whopping two. Yep, it would be pretty impressive. All you have to do is uh, raise the sails a little more, Josh. Oh, uh, you do. Give no, it a skull. Just, no, it's fine. Boop. So you get to go up to two. Final position for Galleon. <sighs> yep. Looking at the sloop. The sloop hasn't moved yet, too. Man. Yep. Yeah, Snoop, uh, Snoop could be a little mobile. Uh, the, what, what, what are your actions? What are uh, you thinking? I, I don't think it matters a whole time right now, so I'll drop a fatigue. Yeah, so you go to two, which is still two less dice on skills. Okay, gotcha. I'm going to go ahead and move my fifth rate, because I want to see where that thing goes before I move my sloop. <sighs> yeah. Final position with the fifth rate, and I will reload as my action. All right, Josh, what is the I'm plan? I'm not sure what the plan is. Uh, hmm. I'm going to try to go fast and hope it works. Fair. Oh, so you're just going to go fast? I'm going to go fast. Do you have enough to roll five dice or no? Uh, I should be on three dice right now, I believe. Yep. So three dice, all right. Fatigue's kicking in. Skill one. Skill one, you got free roll. There yes. you go. Okay. So one faster? Yes. All right, here's... We'll try to increase the range, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the last turn of the game for... Or sorry, last move of the game for Josh. We're going to see what he can do here. Will he escape? You're going pretty far. And then you can do a one more yar. Yar. So you've moved, and you can reload, or you can rally. I'll go ahead and rally. No matter what, because what's going to happen is you're going to come in close, and if I take another fatigue, uh, I will surrender. So I yep. can't have that happen. So the goal here is if I have a ship within pistol range in an end phase, and you're full up on fatigue. fatigue. Shaken. Shaken. You, you surrender. And then that goes towards your strikes, and I'll eventually win the game. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm you will win the game if that happens, because he's already got two strike points. Right, and I need, I'm need. i just going to ignore that thing. Even though I did hurt one of its fortifications, I'm just going to go for that. <laughs> fortitudes. So, yeah, fortitudes. I'm going to go ahead and move my little... Uh, sloop. Sloop. Keep, I'll keep on calling it a shoot. <laughs> Ending there, hunting down this Corvette. This is so cool. I'm going to rally my troops so I'm not at two fatigue anymore. That is it. We are ready to start the action phase. Uh, attack, attack phase. Is. Where I start because I got the better initiative. I think uh, it makes the most sense for my sloop to go because he's got. I will remember now that he's a pirate, and pirates get plus one dice to all close combat and small arms attacks. Plus, this guy's pretty fatigued out. <laughs> all right, small arms fire. And because I played the Musketeers card, 
I get to do this twice. So the first one, we have two hits. Fatigue. That's a fatigue. Yeah, that does, the crit doesn't matter again, right? Right. So the second shot is going to be double another fatigue. Wow. Three so hits. So that ship is now fatigued out. He's shaken. He is shaken. Oh, that matters for attacking too. If yeah. you use small arms fire. Noise. Oh, one die. Yeah, always one die. Yep. And we'll take the wake marker away. Well, I'm gonna try to take that last little parting shot at... <laughs> uh... Uh, you could, it would be most effective against... Frigate. My frigate. Yep. I guess, yeah. Well, I, I put him to, to three fatigue. One, one last, last parting, parting shot shots. into the frigate. Huh. Huh. No. Hey. Yeah. yeah that's, oh that's, yeah, sorry, yes, yeah, yes. My frigate takes a third fatigue. It's almost shaken. All right, let's do something cool with my fifth rate frigate. I'm going to fire my cannons on both ends. One is gonna be at the Corvette. I guess this doesn't make any sense. You're probably gonna surrender anyways. Realistically, I just wanna capture the ship. I'm gonna shoot it anyways, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna fire my cannons at the galleon as well. That's eight shots from both sides. Boo, boo, boo. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, I got such a cool big ship. Josh's ship sucks. I'm a poor sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> I am out of musket range of both ships though. So this just cannons into the galleon first. We've got three hits, which is pretty good. Two reroll for skill. Okay, sure, three critical hits. Uh, you ignore two of those, so you take two damage and, a, right. and, a, and a fatigue. And these are gonna translate into, uh, nothing actually. Nothing, no. And then eight shots into the Corvette for insurance. Ah, <laughs> we've got one, two hits. Rerolling for skill, two hits. Uh, do you ignore any of it? Uh, yep, he ignores one. Is there something about the range? Does he have that thing? Because uh, my sloop has it. Small for the fortitude. Yeah, you're right. So he ignores both. All right. And you are going to instead have no damage at all. Noise. <laughs> and the galleon, I was able to get out of his arc yes. with my sloop. Lastly, I got my fifth rate frigate who's just going to. This is your light frigate. Petite frigate. That's right. Yeah, my light frigate. My little frigate is going to fire into the corvette. I'll do muskets and cannons because I have range on both and I got musketeers. Plus one for. Uh... Oh yeah, three total. Yeah, so I'd have, I have three total dice yeah, because I'm a pirate for small arms fire, but I lose two because of my fatigue. We have one more fatigue. I guess that actually doesn't matter. I don't know why no, I bothered shooting that. Why did I even shoot that? And four shots with a cannon. Two hits. Three, three hits. hits. Because, hits. And a skill. One. Ooh, four hits. Hmm. Wait, is that? Ouch. So that's three, three damage. Uh, three damage, yep. Yeah. And a fatigue. How much damage does he have left? Uh, three. Oh, pff, he's fine. And then, oh. Whoa. <laughs> so Triple, well, so, triple. So here's what happens there. Oh, no way! Did something actually happen there? Yeah. So he's gonna lose. He's gonna lose his one fortitude. Okay. All right. And because he's got skulls, he's all his damage. He basically has a powder detonation. So you no, my ship! Just, <laughs> my ship! My <laughs> ship! <laughs> so he loses his fortitude and that. So he will take. Um, so he doesn't get to get captured, but he is uh, disabled. Some terribly catastrophic damage. Yeah. What have I done? Oh, <laughs> such a novice pirate. <laughs> it's just like, I'm embarrassed how bad of a pirate. Oh. Well, the guy that's going to surrender at this point, that's the important thing. Right. So I guess in the long run, I'd have three ships surrounding the galleon. I would assume the galleon, there's no way the galleon would be able, be able to outrun me. Right. No. Look how slow he is. Especially with no, all three of those ships. He's not. And it, the wind is coming this way, so you're up with He's got to go can, this way. He can go the other way, but it's, he's going to have a rough go. <laughs> yeah, I, I could just go this way for a while. I guess, yeah, no, this you ship would take. turn around to come get the, me. This ship would take forever to turn around. Yeah, well, These two will get you. The frigate will chase him down. So, the, um, so here's what happens is that Josh is now up to four. Yes. Strike points. Because I've uh, essentially scuttled two. Is that the term scuttle or just destroy? Doesn't disabled. matter. Disabled. Disabled? All right. I've disabled, disabled two ships. Two ships, four strike points. And if you ever have more strike points, then you have ships on the table. Yeah. And he has his flagship left, which does count as two, two ships. but still not going to cut it. Right. Which, so just in time, at the very end of turn eight, the last little moment, we're able to, to pull it off and, and capture the, the guy now strikes its colors and you'll it'll surrender and you'll go and plunder it. And all the treasure is yours. There's, there's all your treasure yes. and you plundered. So I do get the galleon in the end. Screw you, Josh. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to believe that there's the discipline that we're throwing everything useful off board. And it's possible. Oh, I guess there's yeah. that. Yeah, they're, would, they, would they destroy their own galleon? Uh, in some cases, sure. If they felt that it was worth it. Maybe I don't get the galleon in the end. But that was cool anyways. <laughs> there's <laughs> islands close by. We can get the rowboats to there in time. That's maybe. fair. That's mm -hmm. fair. Anyways, everyone, that is, that's it. That's oak and iron. That was... That oh. was something. Well, let's set up. That was good. Uh, we'll get tidied up a little bit, and right. we're going to have a little post-game chat. Yes, of course. See you guys in uh, but a second. All right, folks, welcome to our little post-game chat now. So Luke and, I, Luke and I have had the chance to kind of talk a little bit, kind of get a, our, our heads wrapped around what we did there. So 
Uh, let's start talking overall impressions of the game. Uh, so this is that, you know, <laughs> it, it's great to have Mike here and be able to, you know, have him guide us through the game, but this is the part where we try to kind of dissect his creation, I guess. Right, this is pretty much the phase where we give him high praise the entire post-game show. <laughs> <laughs> or just, you know, tell him how bad of a job he's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's one or the other. So uh, I'll start off kind of overall impressions of the game. It's it's the, the guy. I talked a little bit. I think in the the open vault. I think you guys might have seen this already. Um, I, I feel like the game's got the right amount of crunch. Um, there there's enough going on with each individual ship and model where you know if you're looking for that a hundred percent historically accurate down to every little detail. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think this would be the game for you, but I think that those. People that want to play that, they're few and far between. I think for most of your gamers that uh, are looking for a game with a good historical setting uh, that is pretty darn close to being historically accurate um, without getting down to, you know, every little movement you make is going to take you 45 minutes and you got to have a degree in calculus to be able to figure out how to do it. <laughs> right. I, I think this is where we're at with the game. So um, I'm usually not one that likes to compare one game to another. Um, but, you know, this gives me the same sort of vibe and feel as something like... Um, I think the closest I can think right now that uh, I've played recently... Uh, would be Armada. Okay. Right. Armada. It's a fair comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of planning going on um, with, with with how you're going to do stuff, um, but obviously the turns work differently. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, like the player turns and all that. Um, but you're still having to plan ahead of time. Uh, all of your your movement have definite consequences on the game, and the obviously the mechanic of the the wind direction changes up the way you're going to do a lot of things. It makes you really kind of think. Yeah. Um, there the wind in space. Pr- yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, a different <laughs> genre. But again, trying to find something where, you know, eh, this reminds me a little bit of the, the, the feel of this. The rules aren't necessarily similar, but it, it's got the same feel where what you're doing, you know, definitely has consequence overall. Uh, I found everything flowed really well. Yep. There wasn't any Perfect. time that I kind of sat there and went, well, that feels clunkier. That doesn't make any sense. Like, it all kind of was fairly common sense stuff once we picked up the the basic concepts of all the different stats i think in the grand scheme of things we we, we asked everything once yeah how does this work yep. okay yep. cool and then we kind of i think for the most part had it down and we're getting the calculations right yeah i think so for the most part everything mm-hmm. made logical sense like you you explain i'm like that does make sense yep i, I could see that happening and mm-hmm. there was no i never felt like you know when you feel un- not uncomfortable during game, but like you're you're, you're kind of lingering on something like oh, I didn't like that, I didn't like that, and, and then it was perfect. It was good. I loved it. Yeah, I was super happy with the flow. So, uh, for those that have heard me ramble on in various different forms of media, being a you know casual uh, war gamer that's interested in historical settings um, and wants a game that has uh, good immersion but keeps you engaged because the game <laughs> flows well, this is this is the sort of game I'm after. Where you know, um, you, it, it's easy to sit up. It's easy to, uh, you know, teach somebody new the basics of how to play and get your group interested. Because that's one of the other big concerns I, I have when I look at a lot of these games is how much work is it going to take for me to get other people playing? And this game, mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be a whole <laughs> lot. Like, there's a lot of really interesting hooks once you learn some of the basic mechanics. So. Um, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, oh, 100%. No problem. I'm going to try to get my friends into it as well. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's, it's, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. It's an easy... Like, one thing I want to note, it's an easy buy-in too, right? Because if you, you don't have to worry about buying hundreds and hundreds of dollars of terrain, it's, again, that small-scale game where you can get away with bringing, like, six ships. Like, six ships is... That's a good long game right there, alone just with six yep. ships. Mm-hmm. And then you could buy a water mat or make, figure out a way to make your own water terrain, right? It all works. <laughs> it's normally played on a 3x3, three three, so you don't even need a large area to play on. Right. So it kind of accommodates all those factors. Mm-hmm. Right. So I look at, you know, your your local favorite uh, game store. Yeah. Um, any other game table should be able to easily accommodate this. Even if you're jumping on the tables that are usually being, you know, magic or whatever else, mm-hmm. you should have more than enough room to play the game and still have room for your stack cards and everything else. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I definitely, you know, like the feel. As far as, uh, now you had mentioned that, because we were playing with the prototype ships. Right. Um, so you were saying that uh, when the ships go into full production here, mm-hmm. 
Okay. It's going to be, uh, it was PVC hulls and right. then hard plastic Hard plastic sails. sails, right, exactly. And the hulls will be brown, and then the sails will be white. Perfect. So the mast and the sail would all be a piece of white plastic and then the whole brown so that even if even out of the box it'll, though it's not painted it doesn't it's not going to look striking like it's going to look like it's supposed to kind of look okay uh, especially from the bird's eye view kind of perspective yeah so so I, I guess one of the other questions for me miniature wise is mm -hmm. uh what, what are we working with for the sails is it something that they're going to be easily removable or have to glue them in where yeah. are we at with that so right now we're trying to make it so that the sails will be removable um which is with the hard plastic and the PVC, it's kind of nice because it's, you know, the softer plastic will give a little more yep. and you kind of pull it in and out without messing it up too bad. Um, <clears throat> so, so far it's been working okay. Uh, we have to actually get a production sample to make sure that'll work, but <laughs> uh, but so far it seems like that, that it should be fine. Yeah. Okay, right on. Uh, Luca, what did you yeah, you gave some of your impressions. You want to give us your, your kind of overall impressions? I know that because uh, you've got the perspective, like I – this is really cool for me because I'm into the historical setting and I can right. I, I know enough about this the, the period to get interested at what we're talking about. So from my perspective, I know mm -hmm. next to nothing of the period, the age of sale, right? Mm -hmm. Is that's what it's called, right? The age of sale? Yeah. Something like that. Like mm -hmm. it's like just this is before the Napoleonic Wars. Right. So this is something I have no knowledge on, but the rule set is a solid rule set and you're looking for that kind of game that has High comp like not super high complexity in the movement phase, but where you win in the movement phase still. You could uh, you could be that kind of person who wants to get into a game and you love the big things. And usually when when you're playing other games, you buy something that's like a lot of money, a lot of points. You tend to you can win with that on your own. But you could bring like your first class second or sorry first rate second rate ship, and it, it's not going to do anything if your opponent just open over you. It's right. just going to sit there. It's going to lose all this fatigue. It's going to shoot nothing and stuff like that, right? So it truly adheres to the experienced player, and the experienced player, if they if they know what they're doing, with, if they know what they're doing, when they're trying to teach someone, they can play down and really kind of get that person into the game. And you can teach them all the nuances and everything. Like if you're teaching someone new to the game, like oh, don't move like that because this is what I'm gonna do. And then it kind of it opens up their mind, and they're like, oh my goodness, that is in that is insane. Like <laughs> it happened a couple times in our game between Josh and I, yeah. where I thought I had him, I had my. <laughs> I, I, my little ship was chasing his little ship, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to board you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to make a surrender. And then, like, oh, there's no way you could have made that turn. And it just the turn was perfect. I was so <laughs> frustrated with that. <laughs> and and when I when I, when I I sailed my uh, petite frigate into your, I can't remember what the card was, she uh, bear arm, the, the, where you shoot if I move into your range of shooting. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. They got clobbered good that one. Yeah, that was brutal. <laughs> I almost lost my frigate on that <laughs> yep. and I didn't even see it I was so focused on it's been a while since I played a game where you have to focus a lot on your movement where every little tiny like millimeter almost matters and I didn't I didn't see myself falling into that trap and that, that, that got me good that got me good who <laughs> yes I would recommend yeah I think that you know taking a look because um we, we had the fleets, uh, or sorry, the squadrons set up for us before the game. So Luke and I mm -hmm. didn't do the list build, but we, we had the chance to take a look at it during lunch and how it's yeah. done. Mm -hmm. And it's fairly, I mean, it's straightforward. Um, you've got the upgrades, on the, the costs on all the cards. Yeah. And it's the kind of game where, uh, Luca touched on it, there's a, a skilled player will be the player that probably is going to do better. Yeah. It's not that, you know, I uh, went online and found the best list and... A hundred percent. This is this is mathematically what wins, right? Because this is a very um, reactionary gameplay. Yeah, you have There's, to know what you're doing. This is like you obviously want to have future planning, but you have to be able to react to every single move your opponent makes. Like at the last game turn, I had my ships in such a horrible position that I had to move a ship I didn't want to move, and I guess that's where you're going. And I, 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 I it worked out because you were you were limited. But I was still very worried because, again, you caught me with that one turn earlier on. I'm like, maybe you can pull something off again, and I have no idea. I'm going to just hope that yeah. I did it. And right the way. initiative cards add to that a lot, especially because right. there's some that have, like like I said, there's a lot of gotcha cards in there. Yep. But you've got to be, you have to be set up for them. So it's not like you could just pull whatever card in, and that's, oh, this combination of cards is going to be a more winning combination than that. Right. Because they all require you to be set up properly to use them. Right. And then you, and they're delayed a turn, so you have to, you've got to, Deal with what's happening in that turn, and then yes. prepare for to set up those cards. That is a huge factor. The so. fact that you have to pick your next turn's card before seeing anything that is happening in the current turn. <laughs> right. <Woo. laughs> 
Yeah, it's the right way to go. And again, it's going to reward those skilled players that are able right. to, to plan ahead. If you can foresee how your opponent's moves, or at least to a degree. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about kind of the, the, the future of um, both the rule sets and the models, we've, we we talked a little bit off camera about the fact, because the, the biggest ship in this was a... First rate. Uh, yeah, oh, in this well, game the biggest oh, in yeah. this game was a fifth rate. Your fifth rate of the Galleon, they'll both probably be uh, tonnage-wise similar size yep. ships, okay, yep. but the, whereas the Galleon is more about resilience and the yes. the fifth rate's more about firepower. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you guys currently have you know, uh, plans and ideas for all the way up to the big first rate flagship. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that'll be in part, that'll be part of the Kickstarter as well. That's cool. Okay. Cool. So yep. yeah, everything from the sloop to the first rate will be, will be part of the Kickstarter we'll on the seventh. Yeah. Okay. I'm so super excited for that. Can you imagine uh, how big that first rate's going to look? I mean, these, like obviously this is a very small scale, right? But I mean, still comparing <laughs> a first rate to even my fifth rate frigate, it's going to be like, oh, it's going to be huge. Well, yeah. I think this scale works too. It's perfect. It's. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be forgiving for a lot of maybe uh, people that are unfamiliar painting this stuff. Yes. That you can still have a really you can have a really good looking ship without stressing out too much at arm's length. Yeah. Um, but then for those that want to get into a lot more detail, you you can go pretty crazy on these because there is a pretty high level of detail. Going well, yeah, because you can visibly see all the cannons, like even on this, even on this little ship here, and uh, all the big ones. This is like the tiny little cannons, but they're all painted and they really bring out a lot in the model. Yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as setting wise, um, where I assume we're going to stay in the the Caribbean the whole time, or are there there plans or thoughts yeah. there? So not so else? much for this game. Uh, this game is going to broaden out to pretty much Europe and the Caribbean. Okay. Uh, so Europe, Caribbean, North America, that's the focus right now. Um, so one of the first things I'd like to do is to expand it to more Mediterranean stuff in this. Huge. So, so galley frigates for the Europeans and, um, and Zebex and Tartanas and stuff like that for the... Um, for the North African nations and stuff like that, as well as Italian ships like mm -hmm. galleys and stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot of cool stuff we can add. And we want to take it as going forward if the game does well, move forward the timeline, do another timeline so we could have uh, like American Revolution, Napoleonic type stuff, yep. uh, Asian stuff, uh, Indian stuff, and things like that. Okay. So, yeah. Right on. Um, any other kind of closing thoughts or points we want to add in here? Like, I, I, I really can't say much negative about it uh, other than I want it now. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I was going to say, my, my closing thought is I'd like to play another game. Like, yeah. I would like to try that again. I liked the deployment. I think that the deployment was cool. I don't know why. It was just like you were coming up in that line and here. The it's crossing like, the T. The very, crossing very, very the classic, team, right? Yeah. And it was just like, oh, we. I'm a pirate and I'm flying false flags. You think they're English. It's like, oh, or French. Yeah. You were uh, pretending to be French, I believe, yes. Yeah. I guess <laughs> the thing is your narrative you came up with. And you I guess pretend, <laughs> pretending to be English would have made more sense. But <laughs> I, I'm, I, I was just playing along the lines of that. There was a, there was an agreement between the French and the English at this time mm. uh, that, you know, the ceasefire, no, no, no fighting, you know. Uh, leave bygones be and all that good stuff. It's a rare time when the English and the French aren't fighting. Right. I, I assume they were probably <laughs> fighting at the time, privateers and all that good yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, any other kind of closing thoughts for everybody at home, Mike, or any other, any other things you kind of want to pass along or thing, points we forgot to make, I guess? <laughs> Kickstarter date. Yeah, yeah. so Kickstarter date's November 7th. Oakandirongame.com, so oak and irongame.com. Also, firelockgames.com, you get to it through there. Uh, there's a mailing list, so you could sign up, get reminded on when the Kickstarter launches, get updates. There's also some just some information on the game there if you're more curious, some more videos and pictures and things like that. And um, and I think that, that's pretty much it. I think you guys covered it pretty well. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it so much. So. Yeah. I'm glad you made a good game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you go. so I'm, I'm going to play a very fun game today. Yeah. So viewers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously uh, leave some comments, leave some love down in the comment section. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us know, you know, if this is the kind of game you're you're interested in getting into. I'm sure Mike will be uh, reading the uh, comment section too, so yep. this might be one of the ways to you know give some feedback if you want. And if yep. this is the kind of game you're interested in seeing, uh, I mean, let us know. Mm -hmm. This is this is a little bit of a departure from what mini wargaming typically plays. Of course, yeah. Um, it's been a while. Definitely since something we've enjoyed mm -hmm. playing a lot. So who knows where we're going to go from there? So yeah, leave some comments, leave some love. Other than that, thanks for tuning in. Keep being awesome. And as always, happy wargaming.